Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, dan salam sejahtera. So, ini adalah untuk code ECO211. It's the money, banking and the financial system. And actually, it's a chapter 4. Alright. Okay, so uh, because of this topic is about the money, so we have to know what is the definitions of money and the functions of money. And of course, uh, we are going to discuss about why money is so important in our life. Okay, why money? So, uh, in the history, before we are using money, all right, so the medium of the transaction is we are using the system of butter. All right, so what is a system? What is a butter system? It's a direct exchange of goods and services for other goods and services. Okay, all right, so what is the definitions of money? Money is any commodity that is a generally acceptable. This is a very important point as a payment for goods and services. So, therefore, uh, let's say. Uh, can I say three as a money? Yes, of course. If our central bank say the three is acceptable as a money, but no, it cannot be happened because of three was not limited. It's not uh, to be one of the characteristic of uh, as a money. Okay, so therefore money is defined as anything. Yes, can be anything, but okay, it's must limited to be a medium of exchange. Okay, what is a commodity money? Okay, commodity is like shell, beads, kettles and others. What is a metallic money? Metallic money is a metal used as a money, example like gold, silver, copper and others. This is very important what we are using now. It's a paper money. It's a paper circulated as a means of payment. Okay, uh, what is a bank money? Bank money is referred to money, okay, somebody who deposit in the bank. So, this is what we call as a deposit money. So, sometimes uh, we call as a demand deposit. Okay, plastic money. Nowadays, we uh, we are using online banking, okay, anything that online, we are using the credit card and debit card. So, this is a plastic money. Okay, what is the functions of money? Okay, so of course, uh, the money, okay, is very important and they have uh, their own function. And in this, we have four functions. The first is a main, is a medium of exchange. Okay, medium of exchange means anything that you are buy and sell good of ex, uh, good of uh, good and services so you need a money okay and then next is a measure value or units of accounts okay let's say 1 kilo equal to 5 ringgit okay 1 um, uh, 500 gram 500 grams equal to how many so this is what we call units of measurements uh store of value of course now 5 dollar now Okay, tomorrow you wake up, still $5. Okay, so uh, it's not, the value is not decreased or the, the value was not increased or decreased in the immediately terms. Okay, and then the last one is a standard of deferred payment. Okay, in term of which or the future payment are expressed. Okay, it's a possible for people to make any contract or any agreement to exchange of goods and services or the settle, you, you're going to settle debts in the future. So this is a characteristics of money, okay, acceptable of course, durability, divisibility, stability, this is very important and of course as I said that is limited not unlimited and the last one is a portability. Okay, for money also we have a market for money, so we have demand for money, we have supply for money and the interaction between, between this term, demand, okay, interact with the supply. And there is a one point, what we call as a equilibrium. Okay, so why? Why we demand for money? We have three points here. The first one is a transactions motive. As I said that, you, are, you as a buyer, you, are, you as a seller, okay, buy and sell goods and services, you need the money. That is what we call as a transactions, okay. 
And then precautionary motive is something that you demand for money for unforeseen emergency, illness, and others. And the last one is if you are speculator or you are investor. So this is the this is sweet, okay, very uh, suitable for people who investor or speculator. It's a speculative motive. It means that you demand for money to take advantage of the price change in the future, okay, for stocks and bonds. Okay. All right, for money supply, in the money supply, we have M1, we have M2, we have M3, okay, and they have their own formula, how to calculate M1, what the item that have included in the M1, M2, and M3. So, M1 is a narrow money. Sometimes we call it as a narrow money. It's a money transaction in which the money is directly used for transaction. And if you see, M1 equal to currency plus checkable deposit, or sometimes we call it as a demand. Okay, what is the M2? M2 is a near money plus M1. Okay, so to calculate M2, you have to plus with M1. So M1 plus saving and fixed deposit. Okay. The last word, this is very important to make a difference between M2 and M3. In the M2, the item must in commercial bank, but the in the M3 is in other financial institutions. So the item stays same. Okay, see? Saving and fixed deposit, negotiable certificates of deposit, and the repo, and the last one is the bank negara certificates. Okay? Next is the M3 or sometimes we call it as a broad money. Okay, so M3 means M2 plus saving and fixed deposit in other financial institutions, not commercial bank. The difference between M2 and M3 is the saving and fixed deposit in other banking institutions. Right, so okay. What is the financial system? When we talk about the financial system or financial institution, this is a uh, very important because it's a heart of the economy, okay? Which is it's a bridge, okay? Bridge relate with uh, two party, which one party who have extra money, but they don't have any ideas, okay, to spend that money. So what they do is they put, okay, or they deposit the money to the bank. So what the bank do is, okay, bank can um can use that money whether to make loan to other party, which is they have leakage of money, or they can do investment there. They can invest this money, okay, to create the money. So this is what we call as a credit creation process. Okay, so for every country, they have their own central bank. So as we, our Malaysian central bank is Bank Negara Malaysia. So what Bank Negara Malaysia do? Okay, they have several of functions first is to issue the currency and keep reserve safeguarding the value of the currency and then they can act as a banker and financial advisor to the government to be a banker to other banker to promote the monetary stability and financial structures and be a holder of the country's stocks of gold and foreign currency reserve okay all right so in the financial in the financial institution Okay, we have commercial bank, we have Islamic bank, we have investment bank. Okay, so make sure that you know what is a commercial bank. Okay, you know what is the other financial institution like finance company, Islamic bank, merchant bank and others. Is houses. Okay. What is the credit creation process? Okay, credit creation process is a process huh, where... As I said that, there is a bank. Okay, so uh, how? Okay, this is a small given deposit in a commercial bank, which is one party. Okay, put their money in the bank, deposit their money, and then how? This small deposit money, they can be created to be more money. So this is what we call credit creation process. Okay, but uh, they have a limitation and must based on assumptions. The first part is a cash ratio is fixed by the central bank how many is okay it's mean that if let's uh, let's say it's a 10 percent so 10 percent of the cash ratio okay times with your deposit you have to put in the central bank and the balance 19 percent 
Okay, you can make loan to other people. Okay, that is what we call A. B, the public must keep their money in the bank. It means that bank, uh, people trust to the bank. Okay, and then leakage does not exist. Bank assets are only in the forms of cash and loans. And then deposit are in the form of current deposit. Only check, okay, not cash. So this is a process of credit. Okay, so this is a several formula that you have to know. Yeah, like cash ratio, money multiplier, total money supply, total reserve. And the last one is a limitation to credit creation process. Okay. All right. I will explain later. And then there is a several of Islamic financial product. Okay. This is your work. You have to search in Google and understand what the item in the, uh, in the Islamic financial product like uh, Mudarab. Alwadia is a saving, and I think that's all. Okay, that's all uh, for today's PowerPoint slide. So, uh, that's all for chapter 4. And if you have any QA uh, section, we can do in the Twitter discussions, uh, in the WhatsApp discussions. And how to use the formula, how to calculate the M1, M2 and M3, I will do exercise in the WhatsApp discussions. Okay, we can do a past equation to make you understand. Okay, this is all the theory because not, not all the items that I can discuss in the PowerPoint slide. So this is your guideline. So I hope that if you have any question, you can ask me WhatsApp or can do in the WhatsApp discussions. Okay, see you. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.